chaos. It is an anchor uh, in the middle of storms. You are, your word is, and it's a light unto our feet. And Lord, we thank you for your word. Help us to respect it, honor it, and help us to enjoy it. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I get started, I realize that it's Memorial Day, and I do want to just publicly say that uh, we are so grateful as a church for the fallen heroes that have, um, have died to keep us free as a nation. Um, I think we all need to recognize them and remember them, but also remember their families that, um, that have a hole in their family uh, because of their sacrifice. Also, in the, in the midst of that, I know we have some veterans in our, in our congregation today, and I just want to say if you'll stand up, we want to recognize you. Thank you for your service. So the Lord um, had kind of changed my mind this morning on, on my message. Uh, it's been a tough week. I mean, everybody knows um, that it has been in our community. And uh, I want to thank uh, publicly, I want to thank Gino for uh, spending hours and hours and hours and hours with hundreds of students um, as they grieved and as they continue to grieve he has been there amy has been there um and so we're just grateful for the 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 people in our church for um being a part joe i know you were you've been a part of that too and i know that if i'm forgetting anybody i don't mean to i just know that um we have suffered a great loss in our community and I wanted you to know that there are people right here in this church that have stepped up and have done amazing things in this last week uh, for the kingdom of God in our community. So thank you guys so much. <clears throat> so what I want to talk to you about today is um, uh, rest. I mean, <laughs> as I was getting ready this morning, Dwight sent me a... a, 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 a text of a song and inside of that song I was literally listening to it on the way here to study and pray and it kept saying in the song to receive his rest receive his rest receive his rest now my my first message that I'd worked on yesterday was on the deception of discouragement and I think that that's a good message to have, and we might get back around to that one one day. But as that kept going, receive his rest, receive his rest, it just began clicking in me that that is what God wanted me to say and speak about today, about receiving God's rest. And so here's what I want to give you. I want to, I want to give you some truth, and then I want, I want to back that up with Scripture. And I'm going to pour massive amounts of Scripture on you today. So get ready to be refreshed in the scriptures today. But here's the truth. God is not temperamental like you and I are. Thank goodness. We have a ten but here's the truth. We have a tendency sometimes pro to project our instabilities onto God and turn him into something that he's not. We have a tendency to project our instabilities onto God and turn Him into something that He's not. So I want you to understand that because that is what I want to talk about today. We turn Him, some, we turn him into something He's not, which is a fickle God. God is not fickle. God is not volatile. God is not changeable. He's not flighty. He's not temperamental. He's not unstable. He's not faithless. He's not double-crossing. He's not irresponsible. He's not shifty. He's not irritable. He's not anything like me. <laughs> and He's not anything like you. And in the middle of our tragedies this week, I want to stop and recognize a God who is on His throne that is not fickle. He is not temperamental. He is not fickle. He is sovereign. 
He is faithful. He's powerful. He's good. He is strong. And, and I want to remind us of that today, of, of, of who He actually is. And I want these scriptures to wash over you today uh, and wash over your tired and temperamental soul. I want to pray over these scriptures because the Word of God is absolutely amazing. Father, we pray today as we read your words to us that they would not bounce off of our ears. They would not be looked at as words by me. They would be your words to your children. We thank you for your word, the power of your word. God, be powerful in this today. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 46, 1 through 3 says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble, so we should not fear. When I think of that word always, I think that God is just absolutely on alert. Nothing caught God by surprise this week. God, God wasn't shocked or surprised at the events that unfolded this week. God's not going to be caught off, caught off guard by anything that we, we find ourselves caught off guard by. I remember Michelle calling me with the news, and it just absolutely rocked me because it caught me off guard. But God is always ready to help us in times of trouble. It doesn't say he sometimes on, on Wednesdays, like, you know, when you have to... It doesn't... Here's the beautiful thing about God. God doesn't say go into the foyer and to the welcome center and schedule an appointment with God and put it on his calendar like you have to do with me. God is always available. He's our refuge and our strength. Listen to Proverbs 18.10, and you'll have to forgive me this morning. I'm really tired, so I'm not like all jumping up and down. And, but this is just God's Word. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to Him, and they are safe. Amen. Isaiah 40.28 says, The Lord God is the everlasting God. The creator of the end of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary, and no one can measure the depths of his understanding. Psalm 147 5 says, How great is our Lord! His power is absolute, his understanding is beyond our comprehension. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Isn't that interesting that he would say he calls the stars by name and the very next sentence he talks about the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He is telling us, I am all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present. I am sovereign. I am sovereign enough to call out the stars and count them and call them by their name. Amen. He's, he, he, he's setting us up to see the vastness of who He is. And then the very next sentence is, He heals the brokenhearted and He bandages their wounds. I am this big. I am, I am so big that I can count the stars in the sky and every single one of them have a name, but I also realize that you are brokenhearted and I'm here to help you. That's, that's God. He's in the details. God is in the brokenhearted people that are here today. God is with Rex and Dana Torbett. He is with Wesley and Christy Hatcher at this very moment. He's in the details of their lives. But he's so vast that he knows the stars one by one and their names. 
How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. Psalm 148, 5 says, Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. Listen to this. Because He issued His command and things came into being. It's a powerful God. He issued His command and things came into being. Psalm 117, 2 says, For He loves us with unfailing love. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Are you beginning to understand He's not like us? Are you beginning to understand that we're not like Him? And Psalm 103.19 says, The Lord has made heaven His throne, and from there He rules over everything. I set the stage to these verses so I can simply say, when God calls you to something, He is faithful to hold you inside of that. When God calls out your name, and He calls you out, whether it be through a tragedy or whether it be through something He's asking you to do for His glory and His kingdom, or whether it's something in the details, He's powerful enough, He's faithful enough to hold you into that position for His glory. And I, and I want this to make sense today because I believe He wants me to tell you today that He's calling you to rest. He's calling you to rest, to tell you that He is in charge and that there's nothing that's catching Him by surprise. And, and we set the stage this morning with those verses so that we can understand that when He calls us into rest, that we know that as we rest, He's taking care of things. He's not irritable. He's not mad. He's not temperamental. He's not unstable. He's not unforgiving. He's strong and mighty and powerful. And He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the one sovereign God. And we can depend on Him as we rest. And here's the truth. We all need rest. Every one of us needs rest. We don't get it a lot of times, but we need it. Our minds and our emotions and our temperament and our hearts and our actions and our feelings and our schedule are all over the map. Absolutely all over the map. I just wrote some things down. I was typing away this morning. Our minds run 90 to nothing. Our schedules are jam-packed with a to-do list that's two miles long. Our emotions ebb and flow like the tide of the ocean every day. Our relationships with other people are surface at best because we're so busy. Our hearts are constantly aban um, abandoning the connection God wants us to have with Him. Why? Because we don't know how to rest in His glorious presence. Our hearts continuing, continually abandon the connection that God wants to have with us. Why? Because we don't know how to rest in His presence. We're too busy. Our minds are going 90 to nothing. Our emotions are all over the place. And if we even had one, uh, a, a, catch, a, a second, a catch it, a second to catch our breath, we fill it with something that doesn't add value to our hearts. It doesn't add value to our connection with God. And so we have to be careful. I mean, church, coming together to worship the living God together in a lot of our minds needs to fit within an hour to an hour and a half because we got things we got to go do. And that's one time a week. That's what we're willing to give the Creator I'm not getting on to you. I'm, I'm talking to me. But we'll give him a, an hour and a half, and God forbid if we go to 12.15. Not really. Y'all are really good about that. <laughs> but the truth is, is after that, we don't give a lot of time. And, and, and it's not only because we're busy. It's because we're tired. We're busy and tired, busy and tired, busy and tired, tired and busy. We're hurry sick. And even when we do have time, we fill it with something invaluable to our hearts. And I wonder sometimes why I'm so empty on the inside. 
If I have a free 30 minutes, what do I do with that? I can't even slow my mind down long enough to experience the presence of God. And, and Christy wrote her whole thesis or doctoral or whatever on this. She's the doctor in the family, not me. Can you tell? But we wonder why we're so empty on the inside. It's because we don't know how to rest. And Jesus comes onto the scene. This is beautiful. This is the best part of the sermon. He comes onto the scene and He says, Come to Me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. And that's Matthew 11, 28, 3, I mean 28 through 30. And what, what Jesus is saying today, I believe, and, and it is take your emotions, your temperament, your indecisiveness, your brokenness, your guilt for not doing enough, your wavering heart, your unloyalty, your unreliability, your unstable mind, your fickle behavior, your heaviness of heart, and bring it to me and I will show you what to do with it. Now you might say, well, that's not in the context. What Jesus is actually talking about is religion in the context. He's saying the Pharisees are dumping all this stuff on you to make you feel like you're not worthy and not measuring up. I say, come to me and I'll give you rest. Amen. But I want you to understand something. There's a lot that encompasses religion. It, 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 it's, it's about heavy burdens that we heap on ourselves, the guilt. I was talking to a mom the other day, and she is a fantastic mom. It was, I was, it was a husband and wife, and she was a mom, and she says, I, I just don't feel like I'm a good mother. And I, I, would, I would dare to say that most mothers in here feel that way. I mean, like, that you feel like somewhere deep down inside, uh, when all is quiet, you say, I'm not a good mother. And so we, we put shame on ourselves for that. Or we're not a good father, you know. Uh, we, we, we go through life heaping things on top of us. And, and Jesus is saying, take all of that and bring it to me and I'll show you what to do with it. The truth is, is we are very weary people. We're weary Anybody want to agree with that? You're too tired to agree with that? Who said that? Jesse? Oh, Benjamin. That was good. That was good. We carry sacks of bricks up and down the mountain every day and we're exhausted. And Jesus comes on the scene. He says, I have a better way. Rest in me. Don't weigh yourself down with heaviness. So, within 10 minutes, I came up with this really cool acronym so that you can remember how to rest. R. R. I'm not making fun of you, Pastor Jack. Captain Jack Cataract. <laughs> R is to remember his forgiveness. You are forgiven. Once and for all, you've already passed from death to life, Scripture says. But we tend to forget that sometimes and we heap religion back onto our hearts. We heap things that don't belong back onto our hearts. Isaiah 43, 25, this is a phenomenal scripture. It says, I, yes, I alone. This is God emphasizing Himself. This is God emphasizing, like He has to do that. Like God has to emphasize Himself. But in this particular passage, God emphasizes Himself. 
He says, I, am I saying that wrong? Go on, Pastor. Oh, uh, y'all are heathens. I, yes, I, is what he says. I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. <laughs> Psalm 103, 12, we say this all the time. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Isaiah 118 says, come now, let's settle this. <laughs> let's settle this. I'm tired of dealing with it. Let's settle it. Says the Lord, though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Let me tell you something. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, you are forgiven. If you are here today and you have never met Jesus Christ, and you have never surrendered your life over to His Lordship, Jesus says, I am the only way to the Father. If you've never done that, please come talk to me at the end of this service and we will change that. We will change your eternal address. And every time we feel like we have to start proving something to God, just remember His forgiveness. I, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but... There are times when I feel like I have to prove something to God and I just have to remember that I don't have to. He's not keeping score anymore. Number two, E. All right, so what was R? Remember His forgiveness. I just want y'all to walk away with this today. E, enjoy His goodness. This is how to rest. Enjoy His goodness. God is in love with you, and His love is unconditional. It's not like our love. Our love has conditions on it. His does not. Psalms 116, 5 and 7 says, How kind the Lord is, how good He is, so merciful that this God of ours, the Lord protects those of childlike faith. Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to, to me. Has the Lord been good to you? We must constantly remember His goodness over us. We, when we do, our soul just seems to relax in His arms. I have this picture um, that when I was five, I was laying on, my dad was laying on the couch and I was laying on his um, lap or on his chest and his big arms were wrapped around me and I have I have that picture on my desk and it just it's just a constant reminder of how good my dad was. And he was strong and I felt safe, but more importantly he was good. I could trust him. I could trust him to love me. And and maybe you don't have that picture of an earthly father, but I can tell you this, your heavenly father is the perfect picture of a good father. And he wants you to crawl up into his lap and let him wrap his big arms around you and love on you with his goodness. So we remember his forgiveness. We enjoy his goodness. And number three is stop believing what the enemy tells you. This is the best thing to rest. One of the best. There's four. This is the third one. <laughs> Stop giving stamp. <laughs> uh, I was typing fast. This says stop giving Stan an ear. Okay? So whoever Stan is, don't give him anything. Don't give him an ear. Stop give, giving Satan an ear. All he does is lie. You know how you know he's lying? Because he's talking. He wants to try and convince you that God is not a good God who loves you. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to convince you that God doesn't love you and that he's not good. And that you really haven't been forgiven. But that's not true. It's a lie. And, and sometimes we believe him. Sometimes we, 
let him whisper in our ear over and over and day after day and we start to believe his lies and we don't we 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 are just confused and chaotic and he's going that's exactly where I want him to be that's exactly where I want her to be confused and chaotic and messed up and and just trying to figure God out remember what Jesus says come to me who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I'll give you rest I mean let's go to that real quick before um, because I, I just want to I want to read that scripture over you again because it's so important Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. One of the lies the enemy will try to give you is that God is complicated. God, God, you, you, there's, there's many ways you have to, you know, proceed to get to God, that God's overly complicated and we start to believe that and we just give up because well I'm never going to find God. Jesus is saying no. It's simple. I'm going to give you a verse here on number four that talks about how simple it is to rest in the Lord. But 1 Peter 5 8 is stay alert. It says stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy the devil. He names him. He's naming him. He's calling him. His, your, this is your enemy. The devil is your enemy. Your enemy is not your brother or your sister or anyone you're in a relationship with that you might have something against. Your enemy is the devil. He calls him out. He names him. He prowls around like a roaring lion. I mean, he just paints this picture looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Stop listening to the enemy. He's no good for you. He's no good for you. He lies and he brings confusion into your life. And then number four, the T, is talk to God. God delights in fellowship with you. Talk to him. All the time talk to him. I had a conversation with him seriously two days ago driving down the road and I, I was acting like he was the passenger in my car. Do you do that? Isn't that awesome? And I'm like driving and I'm like, yeah, I know, Lord, I got some things I need to talk to you about. And I'm sitting there talking to him. Like, and you might think that is so weird. No, it's not. God says, I am with you always. <laughs> So if you want to pretend like God's sitting right there, do it. I'm not, well, you know what? Let me retract that. You're not pretending that He's there. He's there. <laughs> There's nowhere you can go from His presence. So that, that sounded horrible. Like, you want to pretend like God's there? Well, pretend like Santa Claus is there? No. God is there, and He's real. So if you want to visualize him sitting in that passenger seat with you, by all means, go for it. Enjoy his presence and talk to him. Prayer is nothing more than a conversation with God. That's what's so awesome about prayer. It's just nothing more than a conversation. You, like 1 Chronicles 16, 11 says, Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Always be seeking God's face. Ephesians 6, 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for other people. Jeremiah 29, 12, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Well, what he's talking about there is when you seek me, seek me with all of your heart. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Job twenty two twenty seven says you will pray to him and guess what? He will hear you. Amen. Matthew 26, 41, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation for the spirit is willing but the body is weak. That was Jesus talking to his disciples in the garden of Gethsemane. Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. 
It's easy for us to give in the temptation. It's easy. But number one is to remember His forgiveness. Number two is to enjoy His goodness. Number three is to stop believing what the enemy tells you. And number four is talk to God. Now, I believe that's what God wanted me to say to you today. And I hope you receive that in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your words, your scripture. And Father, if there's hearts in here that are resistant to it, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you soften them so that they can hear the truth. This whole world is lying. (laughs) And you're the truth. If there's anyone here today, Father, that doesn't have a relationship with you, let today be the day. Help us to have a great weekend and a great week. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.